Okay, welcome back to theCUBE. This is HP Discover, day two of three days of coverage. I'm John Furrier, the founder of SiliconANGLE. This is theCUBE, our flagship program about the events. And I'm joined with my co-host. Hi everybody, I'm Dave Vellante of wikibon.org. Brent Ulick is here. He is the Vice President of Application Services at Savvis, a very well-known cloud service provider. Brent, welcome back to theCUBE. Good to see you again. Thank you, glad to be back. Yeah, so uh, you got some props up on stage today. Dave Donatelli gave a shout out to, to Savvis and a uh, good crowd here. Excellent. Yeah, so um, so what's new since we saw you last? We saw you at the Moonshot announcement. Um, you're obviously taking the product now, that was uh, Dave's mention. So what's new with Savvis and, and, and your activities? Oh, certainly. Um, Savvis, we've been uh, an HP partner for quite some time, as, as you all know, and uh, we're, we're happy to be testing their latest technologies and always looking for innovative ways to bring that technology to our customer base and look at how we can apply that to the, the next uh, next year's design and bring those services to our customer base. So talk about the relationship with HP a, a, a little bit. I mean, you're obviously a very well-known cloud service provider. HP, you know, announcing clouds and public clouds and OpenStack clouds. How does that relationship work? Is it a, is it a cooperative relationship? Are you guys, you know, just sort of let that slide? Or talk about that a little bit. Sure, I'd be happy to. I mean, we, we work with HP on our automation as well as how we, we deal with the servers, how the architecture is put together. So there's there's a lot of interactions. Uh, keep in mind, there's lots of engineering teams, lots of conversations that happen at uh, various levels. And we've always found it uh, extremely helpful to be able to tie in and, and talk with the HP engineers to understand how the product works, how we can apply that, how we can deal with the orchestration uh, that powers the cloud. Okay, but you, so you don't consider HP a competitor on the cloud side, or do you? I, I, I'm sure there are groups at Site Savvis that, but that do. But you do. But I, but well, you're the in the application side, side of the house, <laughs> no, uh, we're, we're happy to take our applications and place them on any type of compute platform. Right, right, yeah. But right. I, I would imagine if you get a couple of my uh, colleagues up here, they, they, they might have some different things to So say. that's cool. I mean, that's the way this industry rolls, right, these days? It is. <laughs> so. uh, you know what, everyone competes with everyone at some level. <laughs> so. Um, well, let's talk about what's going on in, in your world. A um, lot of big trends, there's big data, there's there's HANA, I mean, everybody's going HANA crazy. We were down at uh, SAP Sapphire. What's uh, what's hot these days for you? So, I mean, really one of the, the hottest products in the SAP space is HANA, and Savvis has been working uh, day and night to bring out our, our first product offering in that space. So we've been um, applying HANA to a couple of customers' environments, uh, running uh, HP, it's a 580 uh, behind the scenes and we've been quite happy with the way the performance has worked, as well as being able to leverage that to speed up customers' SAP environments. Yeah, so how much of that is just they want a fast way to deploy a POC, um, and, and you know, versus they want to sort of outsource the whole thing over time? Well, I mean, clearly with uh, HANA, the, the whole goal here is to, one, speed up performance. So the transactions that you had that might have taken 10, 12, 15 hours to run some type of batch job can now be run um, almost instantaneously, within seconds, even to just a minute or two. So that's a huge value add to financial customers that are out there that are looking to speed up their business warehouse or their business objects that are currently running um, historically on Oracle backends today. So, you know, it's twofold. One, um, it's an appliance, and therefore customers want to test this out. So they're looking for ways to speed up their business. So time to market's critical to them. And cost is also equally critical to them. So if you start to compare speed and cost to other traditional platforms today, Honda certainly is an interesting choice for customers. The vast majority of people we've seen thus far have done exactly that. They want to test a POC, to try it out. Mm -hmm. They're concerned that uh, some of their key systems on the back end, like business objects or uh, their CRM systems, they, they don't want to necessarily test those to begin with, but a bad performing um, business warehouse or a slow performing transaction certainly makes a lot of sense to go put that onto a POC and see if it speeds up. How long does it take to, to spin up a POC? Uh, with uh, service? Uh, well, no, no. right now it takes us about uh, four weeks, and okay. that's mainly from getting the equipment in and ordered, but we are um, thinking a little bit further ahead, so we're putting some HP equipment in certain data centers, as well as that uh, we're configuring it in such a way that we can quickly jump onto a POC for customers and get that equipment to them faster than four weeks. Brian, I want to ask you about the, <coughs> the application market, because um, the trend is abstract away the complexity, yes. software-defined everything, storage, servers, networks. The application uh, developers out there are under 
a lot of demand to build new mobile apps, cloud apps. Um, what is the current status, in your opinion, where we are in that market? I mean, a lot of IT wants this new style of IT, which is basically rapid, agile application yeah. development. And so they're reinvesting. So what are you seeing there for the trends? Is it early? Um, is the stacks form? What is the environment you're seeing that's preferred? Can you share any insights? I mean, definitely. I mean, I've been a software developer since, uh, uh, for, for many, many, many years. Um, so I, I share that enthusiasm as the developers are approaching this market. I mean, keep in mind, the options you have available today are 10 times the options that we had back in the early 90s and the, the, the late 80s, right? There wasn't a lot, there's a lot of uh, open IT source tools, there wasn't a lot of open source standards, everything was proprietary. Today, um, the, what's available to application developers is incredible. Um, the market, from, what, from my viewpoint, has sped up. And it it's almost seems like every year, new and new innovations come out like Moonshot, like other uh, IDE development tools, other technologies. And then you got OpenStack, for and example. OpenStack Just... is, is, a, is a wonderful tool. Uh, clearly, there's a lot of uh, potential that, you know, for that, that style of product. So is the tooling's good? I mean, is there platform issues? Because platform as a service is a hot thing, obviously. People want to People, DevOps. They want I mean, DevOps. I mean, you know, yes, yesterday was, it was okay to, you know, take six weeks to get a server in, to stand it up, to network it together. Today, people expect that within 15 minutes, right? And then they expect it to all work behind the scenes. Yeah. So the, the type of innovation and the orchestration behind the scenes for this has just sped up. Well, orchestration is a big issue, and that's something that we see is a, a to-do item, but Meg Whitman in her keynote yesterday, she didn't say application life cycle, right. but she did say, you know, nine months to get 1.0, yeah. and then nine months to get 2.0. Yeah. That was the old linear way to look at development. Yes. Um, can you share just benchmarks, you just mentioned getting stuff up quick. Yeah. Agile programs obviously is a norm now, getting stuff up quick and testing it. What are some of the life cycle um, benchmarks that you've seen, just ranges? Oh boy, I mean, you know, it, it really varies by platform, but I, I will say this, that uh, from a lot of customers that are buying services from Savvis, um, you know, clearly the way that we've been able to set up our, our databases in the cloud as, way, as well as we've been able to stand up our infrastructure gives them the tools so that therefore they can get into almost as fast as a cycle as they could possibly push. I've seen some companies be able to turn around code and literally push from staging to development to production within a day. Now, granted, there's always yeah. caveats with all this uh, that goes through, but you know, our main goal well, is to- order of magnitude, a day yeah. is not nine months, right? No, so I mean, you're talking- but, you know, clearly, from our standpoint, is giving them the tools to make that. So, giving them the, the power to quickly build out their environments, to test their code, to move it from test to prod, to basically throw it it's, in production. It's, it's not just the application. So, we were at SAP Sapphire, and you mentioned HANA. You know, I was talking to some of the HANA guys. They're saying, you know, listen, we've been doing some benchmarks on HANA. I asked them the same question. Give me some order of magnitude. He said, literally, 15 minutes queries, which would take 15 weeks or 30 days. I go, wow, you can go on vacation. Right. So, I mean, <laughs> literally 30 days to, to 30 minutes. Yeah. I mean, that's the kind of BI and data warehousing kind of type capabilities. Well, John, I've got a demo in my booth uh, over here that we could show you a Bob J transaction that would take literally 15 minutes to run in two seconds. Yeah. So, it, 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 the, the claims are true. I mean, and, and that's game changing. It is, it, it's huge. And that's going to give developers more resources. So, they're looking at data it's programmable, and I kind of had this debate with Donatelli yesterday, uh, off camera. <laughs> he won, of course, because he's David Donatelli. But you know, he, I, I, put, I wrote yesterday um, that data is programmable in my blog post, and I kind of took liberties with that. But it was, it was kind of on purpose. Right? I want to, I want to get that notion. I want to ask you the question: Is data programmable? Can you program data? It's not just store it. You got to work with data. So that's kind of a concept we're seeing with Hana data is being used in a developer environment. Are you seeing that trend? Uh, in, in short, yes. I, I believe what, what we're starting to see now is that the technology is starting to rapidly evolve and change the game of the traditional way that you develop and build your applications. Like with, with HANA is a great example of uh, innovation and technology all combined in one platform to speed up um, code that's been written over you know 50 years and it's fundamentally changing the way SAP develops their infrastructure. Right now, from uh, the conversations that we've had with uh, SAP, is they're busy rewriting a lot of their applications to take advantage of HANA, and take advantage of uh, having an in-memory database. So final question, because we're getting tight on time here, I want to ask you kind of a, kind of a, share your personal insight and, and, uh, and perspective on 
what's the most exciting thing that you're seeing right now with cloud, with big data, and some of the developer environments out there? Just share your perspective. What is the most exciting thing that, that you're seeing right now in the market? <laughs> well, I don't know if I can name just one, but uh, I mean, clearly, I think the innovations around SAP HANA are, are, are clear and it's a huge benefit to the vast majority of customers that, that we see in the space. Clearly, um, the distributions between MapR, Cloudera, Intel, Hornworks, just the emergence of big data compared to BI from what we used to have in, in the past has been tremendously exciting. And we've been spending a lot of time looking at those technologies and figuring out ways to bring those to market. So I got to ask a quick question, Brett, Brett, before we go. So I was at IBM earlier this week doing theCUBE and I had some systems guys on there and I asked them about Moonshot. They said, ah, we could build a better Moonshot. We just don't see the use case. We don't see the economic case. You're a consumer of Moonshot. Um, what's the use case? What, what are the economics like? I mean, the, the best way to put it is um, you can bring in Moonshot. And keep in mind, this is the, the, the layer innovations are just going to build on top of what they already have. And there's been a lot of uh, great buzz here at the conference about the, the next generation of cartridges that go into Moonshot. But it's a cost economic standpoint. Um, you know, if you look at what HP has between the ProLiant series as well as Moonshot, it's a, it's a cost economical decision. I mean, yeah, Moonshot maybe won't perform as well as a 380 node for node, but the cost is significantly different. So if all you're trying to do is power a LAMP stack or um, some servers or some other use cases, what you find is it's cost economics, yeah. right? Less power, less space, more of them, Easy to consume. What's not to like about that? Okay. All right, Brent. Thanks very much, Brent. You're looking for coming on theCUBE. We'll be back with our next guest after this short break. We're here live. Three days of wall-to-wall -wall coverage. This is theCUBE, Silicon Angle, and Wikibon's exclusive coverage of HP Discover. This is Las We're in Las Vegas, Nevada. We'll be right back with our next guest at this short break.